Hello and welcome to how to play the Empire in 2021. If you're not aware, this is an update of the guide that I made for the Empire all the way back in 2019. I'm going to be covering everything I can here that's been changed, so if it feels like I'm jumping around a lot, it's probably because I am. First of all, let's start with the Legendary Lords. First up, Karl Franz. The only change with him is the fact that his faction, instead of being called the Empire, is now called Reichland. I also didn't do skills or missions back in the day, so I'll quickly rattle through those. First of all, his skills, you want to go Root Marcher, Leader of Renown, Reassuring Presence, Irrepressible, of course, to get to Lightning Strike. Then Logistician, Quartermaster and Headhunter are all great. The best of the Empire line is unique, so always a fun time. And then the red tree focusing on his key units. Pick up amounts of your choice, and then any others of the top row miscellaneous buffs. Cal also has access to a whole bunch of missions. First of all, we have the Battle of Blood Pine Woods. This is a pretty easy ambush versus a small Empire army with a very small set of reinforcements. You can take this one on pretty early, so don't be afraid to go in with whatever army you have as soon as the mission unlocks itself. Next up, we have the Battle of Galmaraz. This battle makes you defend versus a meager army of greenskins that get two sets of spider-like reinforcements. You also get reinforcements from Thorgrim Grudgebearer, so a decent mid-game army should be able to do this one. The item gained grants some nice battle and campaign boosts, as well as an augment ability. Battle for Beast Slayer is versus a small Norskan force that gains two sets of reinforcements. Nothing too elite, but there is quite a few of them, so you should be fine with a full mid-game stack. The item gained grants battle buffs and an augment ability. The Silver Seal is a two-parter battle. Part 1 is versus a decent Vampire Count's army of a bunch of heroes and a few endgame units. You also get two sets of reinforcements, which are Crypt Horrors and Ghouls, so nothing too serious if you have some ranged. You might need a later game army for this one, since it is just so many enemies, and of course bringing a Firecaster would go a long way. Part 2 is versus a very similar Vampire Count's army with a few heroes and late game units. Take a similar army to the first battle, and you should do just fine. The item gain grants some defensive bonuses, both in battle and the campaign. Next up we have Balthazar Gelt, who is leading the brand new Golden Order faction that starts in Fildorf while also being in control of Fort Sol. Other than that, all his faction and Lord effects have remained the same. For his skills, you want to take all the same blue tree skills as we took with Karl, and then pick up the spells, since they are pretty great. The Golden Face Mask is of course his unique line, so definitely pick that up. And then the red line for your key units, amount of your choice, and the top row buffs. Alf also has access to seven missions. The Amulet of Seagold is a two-parter. The Stallion Tomb is versus a fairly small mid-game Vampire Count army that gets three sets of reinforcements of many kinds of mid-game units. You should be fine with a mid-game stack. Marbad's Tomb is versus a later game Vampire Count army with a couple of sets of reinforcements. And again, a mid-game stack should do just fine here. The item gained grants him various buffs for battle and campaign. The Cloak of Molten Metal is a free parter. Part 1 is versus a full mid-game greenskin stack with three sets of various types of spider-based reinforcements. Using a later game full stack should work quite well to survive this one. Part 2 is more or less the same as the first part, but with a very slightly different army to go against. Same advice applies. The final part, however, is versus a mid-game vampire count stack with one set of reinforcement monsters. Take a full mid-game stack here, and you should do just fine. The item gained grants all sorts of magical and defensive buffs. The Staff of Valans is a two-parter. High Pass is versus a decent-sized late-game Warriors of Chaos army that starts a long ways off. Bring a speedier later-game army so you can get on them quickly and wipe them out. The Blood Pine Woods is versus a decent-sized mid-game Empire army with a similarly-sized army reinforcing. You want to take a pretty late-game army so you can get through both of these armies in one go. The item gained grants various magical and campaign buffs. Our final Lord update is Volkmar the Grim. He starts in the same place as Karl in Reichland. His faction effects have almost all been totally changed. He's keeping his 20% magical item drop chance, but losing his weapon strength for flagellants, recruit rank for priests, and upkeep reductions for flagellants. He now instead grants minus 33% cooldown to battle prayers and the accusation ability, plus four to warrior priest and witch hunter recruit rank, and plus 8 bonus versus infantry for flagellants, empire knights, and free company militia. His lord effects have been similarly changed, with him losing his replenishment for flagellants, melee defense, and physical resistance. He now instead grants 4 public order wherever he goes, 10% physical resistance, and 8 melee defense for flagellants, empire knights, and free company militia. Other than that, he's pretty much the same. Again, for his skills, we're of course going with the exact same start into the blue tree, and then going down the Grand Hammer of Sigma line for all of his battle prayers. You want to get his War Altar of Sigma mount, because it is just fantastic, and then go for the usual red line and top row buffs to finish off. Volkmar has access to just two missions. The Staff of Command is versus a decently sized mid-game Empire army with two armies of reinforcements. You want a full mid-game stack to take this one on, 
and the item gained grants offensive and campaign buffs. The Jade Griffin is versus a decent sized mid game vampire counts army with two sets of beastly reinforcements. You will need a later mid game stack to take this one on easily. The item gained grants defensive and campaign buffs as well as regeneration. Our brand new legendary lord is Marcus Wolfhart. His faction is the Hunts Marshals Expedition and they start in the Temple of Kara, which is all the way in Lustria. His faction is extremely unique. They can only recruit a very limited roster with basic units being recruitable at the start of the campaign. Reinforcements periodically arrive from the Empire, giving you instant access to more powerful units, but you have to choose which ones and sacrifice some others. Hostile actions in Lustria result in retaliation from the locals, which mean that pretty much everyone hates you. He also gains plus three recruit rank for Huntsman Generals, and minus 40 relations with Lizardmen. For his personal army, he grants a 50% bonus to ambush defense and success chance, minus 50% upkeep for Huntsman units, and the Woodsman ability for all his army. For his starting units, he brings Archers, Huntsmen, and War Wagons, which are actually all new units, which I'll come to in a moment. For his abilities, he gains Fleet Footed, Hunter's Snare, and Focused Shot. He has no spells or mounts, and in battle, he's a great single target sniper. He has fantastic armor piercing missiles with an anti large bonus, meaning he can take out even the most ferocious of dinos. He also has stalk and can fire whilst moving, so it can be a very difficult lord to pin down. When leveling him, you want to start in the blue tree as usual, then the red tree, then best of the best and focus shots, which are his unique lines, so obviously you want to pick them up, and it also helps that they are actually really good. And then finally, we're finishing in the top row for some miscellaneous buffs. Marcus also has access to two missions. The Amber Bow is you and two backup Empire armies versus three medium-sized Lizardmen armies, full of infantry and monsters. You should take a mid-game stack with plenty of anti-large and ranged units to handle this one. The item gained grants powerful damage buffs as well as a magical missiles ability. His other mission is the Battle for Itza. This is the final battle of his Vortex campaign and I really don't want to spoil it since this one is a whole lot of fun if you haven't played it already. Also, since I never covered them before, I'll quickly go through the skill trees for the other generic lords. Of course, we can't forget about Boris, who is a semi-legendary lord, but doesn't have his own faction, which is just a crying shame at this point. His skill tree is very simple and is actually the exact same as the General of the Empire, so this one applies for both. You start in the blue tree, exactly like we do with Cal. then once you've done that, go straight into the red tree, amount of your choice, and the top row buffs. Couldn't be more simple. As for the Arch Lictors, Again, blue tree first, and then pick up the Grand Hammer of Sigma for all their prayers, the red tree, mount of your choice, and the top row. Our brand new Lord type that's coming with Marcus is the Huntsman General. These guys are like a lesser version of him in battle, but with more of a focus on fire. They have the abilities Oil Flask, Hail of Fire, an Arrow of Akshai, and pair wonderfully with a Firecaster. In battle, they are anti-large missile specialists with Vanguard deployment and Stalk and Firewalls moving, meaning, like Marcus, they can be very hard to pin down and take on even the most ferocious of the enemy dinosaurs with relative ease. Again, when leveling them, we want to start in the blue tree and then head into Circle of Protection, since that line has some great choices. The Arrow of Akshai line is unique and pretty great for improving their and their army's damage. And finally, the red tree focusing on key units and the top row. Now to quickly go over any new units. First up, we have Archers, which are a very basic Archers unit that are decent, but fairly weak versus armor. They have quite a nice range and can do very nice at peppering down weaker enemy units, but certainly aren't the damage dealers, and you'll want to replace them fairly quickly into your campaigns. We also gain Huntsmen, which deal anti-large damage, come with Vanguard deployment, Stalk, and can fire whilst moving. They are kind of similar to a bunch of mini Marcus Wolfhearts, since they do the anti-large damage and are really fantastic at taking on monsters and dinosaurs. When playing as him in Lustra, take a bunch of these guys and you will not regret it because that bonus versus large really does add up, especially when you're going against Nakai and his massive, massive dinos, which just have oh so lovely hitboxes. We've also gained War Wagons, which are an armored missile chariot unit with armor piercing missiles and can fire whilst moving, but no one really likes these lads since they are just so slow and if they get pinned down, they die almost immediately. Honestly, you're better off using Outriders, but if you're really looking to use these guys, then just make sure to get them on the flanks of the enemy and do not let them get pinned down and run as soon as something approaches you. They also come in another variant, which is Mortars. They swap the men with rifles for Mortars that have less range than the regular Mortar units, but are still Mortars that you can move around a little bit more rapidly. Again, I'd say you're probably better off just taking some regular Mortars and protecting them, but to each their own. He also gained three new units of Regiments of Renown, the Death Jacks, which are an Archer's unit, which gained Vanguard deployment, Stalk, Sniping, and two Missile Strength. The White Wolves, which are Huntsmen, which gained 14 melee attack, nine melee defense, four weapon strength, 10 charge bonus, and one Missile Strength. And finally, the Black Lions, 
which are a war wagon's hellblasters unit. These are a totally unique unit that basically has a Gatling gun in a war wagon that shreds whatever you point at as long as you can keep it alive. This is the one war wagon unit that I can wholeheartedly recommend because it is bloody good. I've also gained a new hero, the Amethyst Wizard. This behaves pretty much the same as every other wizard, has all the same mounts, but just has access to the Lore of Death and the accompanying Life Leeching ability. And also, since I didn't tell you how to level any heroes, I'll quickly go through that. For Empire Captains, you want to go training, Blade Master for all kinds of battle improvements, amount of your choice, top row buffs, and immortality. Witch Hunters, you can go one of two ways. If you're going for Campaign Assassins, then Specialist, Assassinate, Block Army, Damage Walls, Cleanse Corruption, and Immortality. Dead simple. If you're going for battle, then the bloody blade line for all kinds of battle improvements, accusation, and the top pro for all kinds of powerful effects, and of course, immortality. For warrior priests, you want to go replenish troops, the safeguard line for all your battle buffs, amount of your choice, and the top row for all of his prayers and other miscellaneous buffs, and of course, immortality. As for all the spellcasters, could not be simpler, spells, amount, and everyone say it with me now, immortality. And now we come to the meat of this actual update, the brand new mechanics. Of course, Empire have gained the oh so desired elect accounts system. Now, as for the actual elect accounts, each state in the Empire has an elect account in charge of it that provides a bunch of bonuses for them and their faction. To elect account, you must have total control over the state by occupation, and then you select one of your lords to put in power. To get in control of these states, you can go the traditional route of invading them with some good old-fashioned war, but doing this too much will tend to make the rest of the counts take a dislike into you, which isn't ideal. The other way you can get a hold of them is confederate them via fealty. Fealty is basically another form of diplomatic relations, but it only works with the elector states of the empire, so Marcus is not included. To increase fealty, you can research certain texts, take sides in dilemmas, have high relations with the faction, and assist them in wars by sending troops to defend them and returning settlements to their owners. Once fealty reaches a max, there is a chance for the factions of a confederacy at the cost of imperial authority. Once fealty reaches the minimum, you'll need to find a way to increase it or face war with that faction. The Lord in power gains a unique item, as well as buffs for themselves and the faction, and finally some campaign exclusive units, which I'll come back to in a moment. There are too many to list here, so I will pop them all on screen now. And yes, this new system allows you to finally summon the elect counts, which actually only replenishes the recruitment pool of these unique units. We also have gained Imperial Authority, which I mentioned earlier. This is a new currency that has a bar at the top, and if you have less than one, you're going to be suffering increasing amounts of debuffs to the entire faction. Unfortunately, there is only one positive level, despite you being able to stock it up infinitely, which is kind of a bummer. You spend this currency in certain dilemmas, including when you're given the choice to confederate the other counts. You gain it via other dilemmas, and as far as I could tell, you should be stocking up on this as much as possible, since confederations are going to burn through it. The other currency that is a part of this system is Imperial Favor, and it's pretty much only used in dilemmas that gain you fealty with other counts, as well as more Imperial Authority. And finally, we have Imperial Majesty. This is pretty much a ripoff of the High Elf Influence system, but only works with Empire Factions. It allows you to increase or decrease the relation between two Empire Factions to get someone on your side or turn two factions against each other. The Research Tree has also been totally reworked into these easy to understand sections. It's pretty self-explanatory. Unit based ones improve units, the trade and infrastructure ones improve trade and infrastructure, you get the idea, but it's better and lets you get right into the projects that are going to help you right now. As I mentioned, we also got all these brand new campaign exclusive elect count units. We got these Swords of Ulrich, which are a swordsman unit. They can cause fear, gain frenzy, and three weapon strength and four charge bonus. Eldred's Guard are a shielded spearman unit and gain charge defense versus all and 40 armor. The Nordland Mariners are a halberdiers unit and gains charge defense versus all, the rowdy ability, and six speed. The Karaburg Great Swords gain unbreakable and the Bathed in Blood Aura Augment. The Stir River Patrol are crossbowmen and gain vanguard deployment, two missile strength, and flaming and suppressing attacks. Gunderman's Surefires are a handgunner's unit. They gain increases to nearly every single stat, vanguard deployment, stalk, and become a decent melee combatant. The Knights of Everlasting Light are an Empire Knights unit, gain a silver shield, magical attacks, and the Blinding Radiance Aura ability. The Stubborn Bulls are an Empire Knights Greatsword unit, which are a totally unique unit, which are a more melee combat focused cav unit with armor piercing damage and decent melee stats for early cav. We gain the Knights of Maw, which are another Empire Knights unit, which cause terror and have a grim resolve aura. The Noble Sons Abroad are a Pistoliers unit, which become a decent melee combatant, as well as gaining an ability to boost missile damage. The Bordermen are an Outriders Grenade Launch unit, which gain armor piercing missiles, but lose some overall missile strength. Sutson's Guns are a Mortars unit, and gain magical and fire ammo, six missile strength, and no friendly fire. 
And finally, the Emperor's Wrath is a steam tank, which gains 61 missile strength, burnt imbued attacks, and emergency vents and kaboom abilities. And that about wraps up everything that there is to know about the Empire update. I'll of course be bringing out how to build an Empire army next week, so definitely be subscribed if you want to see that. If you enjoyed this video at any point, then be sure to leave it a like, and if you didn't, then you know what to do. Let's take this time to thank all supporters of the channel, in particular, Kobe Said So and It's Your Boy LC for their fantastic support at the Unclean Ones tier. If you'd like to get on this end screen, then all the details are listed in the description below. Thank you very much for watching, and for now, I've been Colonel Damders, and I will see you next turn.